Welcome to lesson 2.6, polygons. So a polygon, to begin with the definition, a polygon is a closed plane figure with the following properties. So closed plane figure, meaning it exists on a plane and it's closed, such as all the segments meet with no openings. So to dive further into that, the following properties are part of the definition of polygons. Polygons are formed by three or more line segments called sides. Each side intersects exactly two sides, one at each endpoint. And I apologize for, obviously, the unintentional copy and paste in there. So what that should read is each side intersects exactly two sides, one at each endpoint, so that no two sides with a common endpoint are collinear. Then we want to look at what we do with polygons in geometry. <clears throat> so the first thing is we name them by listing the vertices in consecutive order. So the polygon over here could be named A, B, C, D, could be named D, C, B, A, as long as you're going around it in consecutive order. Then the points where the endpoints meet are called vertices. So A, B, C, and D, these points are our vertices or vertex for singular. Consecutive vertices are vertices of, that make up the endpoints of the same side. So in other words, vertices that are consecutive to A would be B, because they make up the same side, and D. So A's consecutive vertices would be B and D. Consecutive or adjacent sides are sides that share an endpoint. So side AD would be consecutive to side AB and side DC. And then a diagonal. The diagonal of a polygon is a segment connecting two non-consecutive vertices. So it's connecting two vertices that are non-consecutive. And diagonals do not have to be drawn to exist. So a diagonal would exist from A to C and from B to D because they are non-consecutive vertices. <clears throat> now example one. Explain why each of the unions of segments is not a polygon by stating which part of the definition it violates. So you'll have to draw these three different images. So in A, we have two line segments and the third one over here. So the problem with that is that the segments don't intersect. In B, the problem with this figure right here is that each side doesn't intersect exactly two other sides, meaning we have an opening or a gap. And then in C, the problem with this is that the intersection of the sides is not at the end points. <clears throat> so example two for parts A through F is asking us to look at the figure over here. And you'll already see I drew in a couple of additional segments which we'll cover as we go through A through F. So in A, give two names for the polygon. So we could call it Again, anything with the vertices in consecutive order. So that could be polygon LMNOK or ONMLK for two examples. Name a di diagonal that is entirely in the interior of the polygon. So something that's completely inside our polygon. And it connects non-consecutive vertices. So MO would be an option. LO would also be an option. Both are diagonals contained entirely on the inside. 
a diagonal that's entirely on the exterior would be segment NK. If we connected N and K, they're not consecutive because of O. So, and the segment's completely on the exterior. And then part D, name a diagonal that is not the answer to A or B. So we could say diagonal KM, for example, there. You could also say N to L for another example. In E, a pair of consecutive vertices, so K to L would be consecutive. L to M would also be consecutive for two different examples. And a pair of consecutive sides would be segment NM and ML, or we could say NM and NO. Then we move into the idea of classifying polygons. And when you're classifying polygons, that means that you're naming them based on their number of sides. So these tables here give you common classifications or names of polygons. And then a general rule at the end, if we just have an N number of sides. So obviously three sides is a triangle. Four sides is a quadrilateral, five is a pentagon, six is a hexagon, seven heptagon, and so on. And then we get to an n-gon. So what the n-gon means is if we have a number of sides and there's not a common name for that polygon, like decagon, then you can always name a polygon based on its number of sides followed by the word or the letters G-O-N. So a 17-sided polygon could be referred to as a 17-gon. So example three asks us to classify the polygon <clears throat> and characterize the region as non-convex or convex. So in A, the octagon didn't copy very well, so I just redrew it here. Feel free to use the one that's there and just complete it. So we know it's an octagon because it has eight sides. Then to tell if it's convex or non-convex, which we already covered in an earlier lesson, the easy way to do that with polygons. If we would extend all the sides to be complete lines and not a single one of them passes through the inside, then it is convex. If we extend a side and it passes through the interior, that would mean it's concave or non-convex. So on A, we have a convex octagon because none of the sides contain points in the interior. And B would be concave or non-convex pentagon because it's five-sided and if we extend the sides they contain points on the interior. And then our final concept for this lesson is looking at types of triangles. So we have three special types of triangles. An equilateral triangle, where all three sides are equal length, meaning all the sides are congruent. An isosceles triangle, where two or more sides are equal length, so two or more sides are congruent. And then a scalene triangle. And a scalene triangle is where no sides are the same length, so no sides are congruent. And then something to keep in mind is that these are special types of triangles. So an equilateral triangle is a special type of isosceles triangle because isosceles are two or more sides of equal length and an equilateral has all three sides of equal length. So just like a square is a special type of rectangle, an equilateral triangle is a special type of isosceles triangle. 
And then example three asks us to answer the following questions about triangles. <clears throat> so explain why no triangle has diagonals. Well, triangles only have three vertices, and all the vertices are consecutive to each other. So a diagonal could not exist because we don't have non-consecutive vertices. And then in B, an equilateral triangle is a special type of what figures? So first off, an equilateral triangle would be considered a special type of polygon. Then it's also a special type of triangle. And even more specifically, it's a special type of isosceles triangle. So as you're working through the practice problems, <clears throat> the most important things to keep in mind are these properties that make up the definition of polygons, and then the idea of diagonals and consecutive vertices or consecutive or adjacent sides.